everyone, I'm Norn Queen Alexis, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome to the update of Warhammer 40K's tabletop game of 9th edition. I almost said 8th edition, but I didn't. I caught myself. So, I'm going to try to ignore the stupidity that was yesterday, and focus on today and the game that I absolutely love. So, we are going to be taking a look at the brand new updates to the rules for this game. I don't know if both of these are different, so we're going to open both of them. Are they different? No, they're the same. They just have two different pictures. Okay, so, updates. Can you believe that the new edition of Warhammer 40k has been with us for half a year already? No, nobody can, because literally no one's played it. Just going to point that out. No one's really played 9th edition yet. No one really knows how it's going. And those of you that played in tournaments, well, you're stupid. I'm sorry to say, but you are... Get the vaccine, please. Anyway. So, let's take a look at what this all is and what this all, yeah. Well, 2020 may have been kind of, been kind to of competitive gaming events. Okay, you know what, no. Nope, not getting into that. Not getting into that. Um, full suit of FAQs are coming. Uh, just the points cost covering every model in every faction, which ultimately makes the codex is pointless, but we're not going to go over that. Um, points. You'll be able to download a comprehensive updated point list covering all of the current units in Warhammer 40k. I assume this is also going to be on the Citadel app as well as Battlescribed, which you pick your poison when it comes to those two. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let's actually, can we, can we get some new FAQs? There we go. Look, see, you did it. So glad. Uh, yes. And we want Warhammer 40k. So, the ones that are updated today, and they write it in the weird way, the non-America way, although, to be honest, I'd rather do things non-American right now. But, let's get into this. So, we got Chaos Demons, Gene Sealer, Colts, Harlequins, Necrons, Spas Marines, Tau Empire, Tyranids, uh, Grand Tournament 2020 Mission Pack, which I actually haven't played anything out of, the Minotaurum Field Manual, which, again, I don't even use, um, power rating updates, no one's going to look at this. Psychic Awakening Engine War got updated, Phoenix Rising got updated, Ritual of the Damned, Saga of the Beast, The Greater Good, Psychic Awakening War of the Spider, geez, the core rulebook, uh, Chapter Approved Tactical Deployment, I didn't even know this was a, this is the thing, oh yeah, there it is, huh, isn't that the one where you deploy terrain, I know one of them is you deploy terrain and it's really bad. Beyond the Veil, which I haven't played yet. Blood Angels. Um, oh, these two got updated. I'm really curious about that. The Death Watch supplement got up, didn't get updated. Okay, so Death Watch, for some reason, didn't get updated. I guess they got it right. Because I am confused. Why not update the compendium also? Weird. Hmm. Okay. So let's, uh, let's grab all of these and take a look through them real quick. My voice sounds a little bit like crap today. I just woke up. Oh, wow. There's a lot. Okay. I think there's Harlequins, Gene Seal Cult, Demons. Anyway, so let's go ahead and X these out. So don't need them. We need these. All right, so they're not at 200 points. I don't know if that's a nerf or not. Were they always that price? Hang on, let me check. Let me check. Let me check. I feel like they were always around that point cost. I still wish you could take them separately, but you can't. Uh, let me just look at my custodian list. because I believe I have them in it. Because if you don't know, these two models are actually really good because the um, Valaren actually unlocks um, unlocks a good chunk for the Sister Silence stratagems. No, they're just 200 points. Nothing really changed. And the following rule to you, Warlord Trade. If Valaren is your Warlord, you must have Peerless Warrior Okay. I hate that they're both not... 
So they're both one unit. Uh, they separate when they deploy, but they they don't get a shared warlord trait when you buy them. It's really stupid. Crusade Beyond the Veil, I don't really want to go into because I don't know enough about it to actually give you an accurate, um, well, an accurate breakdown of everything that changed in it. So I'm not going to sit here and just pretend that I know what I'm talking about because, to be honest, when it comes to the uh, Crusade books, I just have not picked them up. I have them, but I haven't played them yet. I haven't done a pickup game with them. So, Bengals. Uh, nothing changed. And there's a guy with um, a stupid car outside. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Death Company Intercessors. War Gear Options. Change of Fodling to uh, nothing changed there. Nothing changed there. No big changes that I see. Nothing in uh, blue or burgundy. Okay, this looks uh, interesting. So what did they change? Uh, second, second paragraph to read unless specifically stated. Uh, other units abilities have no effect on the units whilst they are embarked in uh, and stratagems cannot be used or affect units whilst they are embarked. Interesting that they put this here and not with the repressor. So technically by this wording you can use stratagems on repressors and affect the girls inside. But that's a whole nother story that I don't want to get into. But this is like the terrain stuff. No one really uses these rules and if you do, congratulations, you're like one of two people that do. Um, the core book, wow, they actually... Huh. Are they really changing that? Okay, that I'm going to get to in just a second. Despo uh, deploying large units. Um, some large models, typically aircrafts, yeah, the Marauder, uh, have wings and other parts that extend specifically beyond the base. Uh, they can make it difficult to fit wholly within your mission's deployment zone. And whilst we, whilst the deployment sequence of the mission clearly states that no part of the model can overhang over the edge of the battlefield or the edge of your deployment zone uh, is not mentioned, for clarity, such models can overhang. Ooh, oh, that's dangerous. Impossible to set them up. That's actually kind of dangerous. That means you can uh, bog down your deployment zone and hang storm ravens off the edge of the map. Or with the Marauder Bomber, since it's, um, I think it's 12 inches long and the deployment is 10 inches now, it just can't fit on the table, so they fix that. Psychic actions, while well, psychic actions are not in and of themselves psychic powers, ooh, that's good to know, they function as much the same way. Uh, for all intents and purposes, when a unit attempts a psychic action, it is treated the same as if they were attempting to manifest a psychic power and as such trigger the rules that interact with manifesting a psychic power. Um, rules that enable you to deny the witch can also be used. Okay, so that's actually really good because I was wondering that one too. Because the way it's worded is it's not a psychic power, but it is a psychic power. So even if it's failed, do you still get the point? Now they clarified that. Out of phase rules and embarked on transports. Ooh, this ought to be good. We wish to add an example to explain how the blah, 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 blah. When a unit uses a rule to move as if it were the movement phase, all its normal rules that would apply in the movement phase apply when making the move. For example, the model in a unit cannot finish, it, cannot finish that movement with an engagement range of enemy models. And if any, and if every model in that unit finishes to move wholly within three inches of a friendly transport, they can embark within the transport. Okay, so yeah, that just makes sense. They just clarified that. No real difference. I changed the second sentence in the paragraph to read unless specifically stated. Other units' abilities have no effect on units whilst they are embarked, and stratagems cannot be used whilst they affect. Okay, so this right here states flat out that you cannot use this sister battle stratagem for the flamethrowers 
to max out a repressor filled with flamethrowers to maximize all eight heavy flamethrowers that it could have. So that's actually, that's something that they should have done in the beginning when they made the repressor. So that's interesting. Now let's go to the second part. Reinforced units and engage, reinforced units and engagement range. Many units can arrive on the battlefield as reinforcements. Typically these units be must be set up more than nine inches away from enemy units. Uh, this means um, that if a unit arrives as reinforcement was set up as close as possible to an enemy unit. To charge an enemy unit in the same turn, it would require a roll of nine or more in order to end its charge move within engagement range of the enemy unit. However, a dist however, as distance are measured between the closest parts of the model's bases, it does not mean that uh, if a unit arrives from reinforcement and is set up on the ground floor of the battlefield as close as possible to an enemy unit that is completely on a terrain feature, it's five inches tall, then their charge roll of eight or more would be sufficient. Um, Okay. It would only be seven inches. Four, five, six, seven. Wait, I'm confused here. Units arrive as reinforcements by using the teleport strike ability. Teleporting units must be set up more than nine inches away from enemy models. So nine inches away. This number two would have to be nine inches. So it is. Okay, these are just examples of the numbers. I'm an idiot. Sorry. Again, first thing in the morning, this is what I'm looking at. Okay, so that makes sense. So this part to this part is nine inches. Uh, the target of charge is wholly within the terrain feature is five inches high, so they can get in and still charge them. Um, if the teleported unit is set up as close as possible to the unit on the top of the feature, a charge roll of eight is required to end its charge move within engagement range. That's actually really cool. That makes putting things on floors of terrain kind of dangerous. I like this. I like this change. I like this change a lot. This actually is a significant change that might actually impact the game itself. And I think this is a really welcome change. And of course, every single redneck in the entire country is revving their engines for no reason outside. Because destroying our environment is not important. Uh, so then they go into this, which we don't need to go over. Psychic actions, out of face embarking. Embarked unit. Okay, we went over that. While we stand, we fight. Uh, wow, we have a lot to go through. And then before the battle, you must identify which three units in your army, including models within fortification battle roles, have the highest point value. And okay, so it's just this is just explaining which models you have to choose for while we stand, we fight, um, and then clarifying it mostly just stating that you have to choose it prior to prior to it. Uh, if your army has three or fewer models, you instead identify all units. Um, its points include all of its weapons and upgrades. Duh. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Crusade mission pack. I'm not going to go over this one. Um, Again, I, I don't know enough about Crusade to go over this one well enough, so I don't want to give you false information. Um, rare rules, always fight first, last. Okay, this I actually wanted to see because I'm playing Slanesh today. Add a paragraph to the end of this rare rule entry. Note that the counter-offensive stratagem requires you to select a unit that is eligible to fight. This means that if a unit under the effects of a rule that say that is not eligible to fight until after all ele other eligible units have done so, you will not be able to select it that unit to use the counteroffensive stratagem. Oh, I simply just can't be countercharged? Is that what that's saying? I feel like that's what that's saying. The unit must, if this means that if a unit under the effects of this rule that says that it is not eligible to fight until after all eligible units have done so, uh, you will not be able to select a unit to use the counter-offensive stratagem. Wow. That's actually a big bump for demons. 
rare rules and replacement units. Uh, add the following points to... Okay. Uh, nine. If that unit was performing an action this turn, it immediately fouls. Okay. That's pretty simple. Attacks that make multiple hit rolls. Uh, some rules, typically weapon abilities, tell you to roll more than one dice for each of the weapons. G. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, make two rolls instead of one. Uh, in these cases, this model of these weapons make two hit rolls instead of one. Um, oh, whoops, I read the same sentence twice, I'm sorry. In these cases, each hit roll is treated as a separate attack that is made against the same target. As such, all normal rules that are triggered by attacks or apply to attacks such as rerolls or modifiers confer by other rules apply to each to hit roll. Oh, they're treated as separate. Okay, so if you have like salamanders, for instance, you can roll the two dice for determining how many shots or whatever. I'm just saying this. Uh, they can then use their chapter tactic to re-roll one of those. Then they can use a command point to re-roll the other one. So that's that's really cool, actually. Uh, rare rule, charging aircrafts um, with an engagement range of the aircraft, however many aircrafts have the abilities. Airborne, that specific... Okay, units that can fly can declare charges against aircraft models. Done. Um, disembarking large models, uh, wholly within three inches of the transport because they are too large to set up within one inch of the transport instead. Ooh, wait, what is this? If it is impossible to set up a disembarked unit wholly within three inches of the transported model because it is too large to set up within one inch of the transport model instead. Okay, so if you have something with like a 50 mil base, uh, like captains, for instance, some space marine captains have 50 mil bases, and aggressors have like 40 mil bases, and I don't know how this would apply. What situation popped in for this? I mean, if you can't fit up wholly within three inches, what character has a 50 mil base that would extend out of the three inches? Are you just putting a whole bunch of Gravis captains in there? How are you doing that? I'm just confused. I want to know what you guys think about that one because that one confuses me. Resolving abilities when making, um, when moving off the edge of the battlefield. Uh, yeah, I assume bombing runs can still be a thing. If a unit moves off the edge of the battlefield, it can still resolve attacks that are triggered. Yeah, it can still do bombing runs. Uh, so that would be things like your Corvus Black Star, your uh, Avengers, and things of that nature. Um, preventing reinforced units from setting up. Rules that prevent reinforced units from being set up uh, take precedence over rules that allow reinforcement units to be set up. Okay, so this was the Gene Stila Cult versus the Alpha Legion Stratagem battle. Um, does not apply to strategic reserve units that are set up within one inch of their battlefield edge and are within their own deployment zone. Ooh! That's a big change. That's a really big change. Okay, so the Alpha Legion wouldn't affect the Gene Stila Cult in their own deployment zone. So if the Alpha Legion comes close and you want to deploy your army, you can actually deploy it behind your lines. You still have to be nine inches away, but it's much easier to get your models out on the board then, instead of just losing. Defensive rules that apply to attacks with specific characteristics. To determine a defensive rule applying against an attack, use these modified characteristics of the attacks uh, that are allocate attacks step of that sequence. Uh, some rules apply attacks that are, for example, each time an attack is made with an armor penetration characteristic of minus one is allocated to a model in this unit that an armor penetration characteristic of zero. Instead, each time you determine if such rare rule is, 
such a girl is triggered, uh, blah, 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 blah. Example above, that means that an attack which originally has an arm penetration characteristic of zero, but then is modified by another rule before the allocation, the allocated attack sets up to B minus one, then the allocate still trigger the ability and change it back to zero. Okay, so this is just getting rid of the sequencing confusion that it had. So if I shoot with a weapon that gets AP minus one, okay, um, and my opponent has an ability that gets rid of AP minus one, but the AP minus one is only triggered on hits um, of a certain number, then the ability still kicks in again, preventing it from being AP minus one. The only example I can think of in this case is actually um, like Rending Claws and Slanesh's Claws, where on sixes, they're AP minus four. Um, so if you have a way of minusing that or giving yourself plus two armor save, it would apply after the wound roll is rolled. Confusing, but I can properly explain it if I had an example in front of me. Uh, splitting units with pre-existing rules. This is going to affect Death Watch quite a bit. Rules that affect a unit uh, at the time when the when it splits into several smaller units uh, continue to apply to all those smaller units for the duration of the rule. Or abilities affect uh, those smaller units whilst they remain within range of that ability. Okay, so this says. Uh, easiest way to explain this is I have a Death Watch uh, Primaris company. I'm not going to try to pronounce what their companies are actually, their kill teams are actually called. But when you put a Reaver in one of them, just one Reaver in a 10 man squad, and that Reaver has the grapple gun, so the entire unit, even if it splits, um, we'll just say five of them split, the Reaver leaves, this squad still has the ability the Reaver had. I think that's how that's worded. I might be wrong, and if I am, please correct me because I only want to give you guys corrected information. Shooting whilst embarked in a transport. Stratagems cannot be used um, in order to affect the those attacks. You cannot use command reroll stratagems to affect dice roll made. Okay, so they nerfed the repressor again. Measure distance and draw line of sight from transport. If transport model made a normal move, advance move, fall back, remain stationary this turn, embarked units have all the same rules. Um, our engagement range, they can only shoot pistols, we know this. Unless specifically stated otherwise, an embarked unit is not affected by abilities. Uh, yep, so these are all just nerfs to the repressor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> these are really just nerfs to the repressor that needed to happen. If a unit was under the effects of a rule when embarked on a transport, uh, blah, 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 blah. Those rules do not apply. Yep. Uh, yeah, these are all just nerfs to the repressor stating that they're not on the field. They don't get abilities. Shut up and stop trying to cheat, Alexis. Literally says that right here in the fine print. You just can't see it. You have to have Alexis vision. Just, it's like Wakanda vision, but actually written well. So... Units cannot disembark from a transport model after it has moved, even if the transport model is under the effects of a rule that lets it count as remaining stationary, even if it has moved. Well, there you go, White Scar players. You're going to be mad. Uh, rule terms glossary, move normal. They just changed it to, yeah. Okay, Psychic Awakening War, the Spider. Um... Use the stratagem that uh, in any phase when an Adeptus Custodes venerable land raider model from your army is destroyed. Okay, that's kind of cool, actually. Um, shield host. If your army is battle forged and includes an Adeptus Custodes detachment, you can select which shield host each of those detachments belongs to. Okay, so you can split them now into different uh, shield hosts. Excluding Trajan, Valoris, and Valerian. Um, Crusade, I'm not going to go over. I do apologize. That's it on this page. Uh, Death Guard, I don't know enough about, but I'm going to try. Um, oh, wait, it's for Crusade armies. I'm not going to go over it. Creations of Bile, Crusade. Um, units, Nordic. 
style. Okay, just creates, just changes it, creations a bile. Uh, can a model with the unstoppable destroyer captain commander trait uh, make a consolidation move while any enemy units are in base contact with it? No, that should have been obvious. A lot of this stuff is just common sense. All right, so right on the top we have the crusade war, crusade rules. I'm not going to go over those. Commander Shadow Sun's keyword Shadow Sun adds Supreme Commander to the to Shadow Sun's keyword. Essentially, Supreme Commander is just their Primarch equivalent. Um, that looks so like really dry right now, and I hate it. Okay, so I don't know too much about Tau, so this is going to be hard. Change to plus three command points for Commander Farsight. Oh, cool. They did give them the Primarch rule. Nice. All right. Um, Crusade, we're not going to go over. Crusade, again, we're not going to go over. And nothing else changes. Saga of the Beast. Uh, nothing changed. Did really nothing change? Can I use the mech work strat the custom job stratagem? Yeah, this is all old. Why does it say it got updated when it, nothing changed on it? I don't see anything that changed on it. Ritual of the Damned. The Thousand Suns got changed for Crusade. Um, it's essentially just clarifying that they get access to their abilities for their cult. All right, looks like we just got Dark Tecmata or Technomancer. Change the last sentence to read. Each time an unmodified wound roll of a one is made for an attack with this enhanced weapon, the firing model's unit suffers one mortal wound after the unit's shooting attacks have been resolved. Okay, nothing really big change there. It just suffers a mortal wound. Okay, skipping through. Oh, this is a change. Cerus. Weapon table. Delete Power Mall entry. Arc Mall. Okay, so he has an arc weapon instead. Oh, that's actually cool. So it doesn't have Power Mall. Okay. Change the second sentence of this stratagem to read that unit can fire, cannot fire Overwatch in this phase, but it can immediately make a normal move or fall back as if it were your movement phase. So you can just when you make a normal move, you can advance. Uh, if you're in combat, you can fall back. So that's kind of super useful. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Dreaded Households of Infamy at the following rules for Crusader. We don't care about Crusader right now. I'll eventually go over Crusader when I have more experience with it. Adeptus Sorority has got a... Um, okay. They got... Points. That this mechanic has got points. These are power rating changes that nobody uses. Um, yeah, I don't really care too much about their power rating. I play this game like an adult. Um, that's a joke. That is a joke. Minnesota Field Manual. Uh, looks like a bunch of points just went up and everything in here. Uh, this will be reflected on your apps, and you'll be able to quickly check this. Um, I don't have time to study this, unfortunately, so I can't tell you the significant differences. They also didn't highlight anything, so that's kind of super annoying. I'm actually really annoyed by that. They don't highlight anything on this. Uh, Grand Tournament Mission Packet. Um, okay, so it looks like... Oh, there's a lot of changers. That's a lot. I need a drink. I need a drink. Ah! I hit the wrong button. Hang on. Okay. All right. So while we stand, we fight. I uh, got changed. If you select this objective, yep, we already read this. Bring it down. Score one victory point at the end of the battle for each monster or vehicle. Um, with the wound's characteristic of 10. They actually lowered it. Wasn't it score 2 or score 3? Because it was like kill 3 monsters. 
I feel like, I don't know, it, between 11 and 19, and then three for each monster or vehicle that has a wound characteristic of 20 or more. I guess they made that fair. You cannot select this secondary objective if your army includes, he's like, okay, that's actually big. Um, you cannot select this secondary objective if your army includes any psychers. Neat. Uh, score three victory points at the end of the battle for each enemy psychic character unit. Mm. Psychic character unit that is destroyed. And two points for every other enemy psyker unit that is destroyed. So no longer do Zoanthropes give all of your objectives immediately uh, for doing this one. Now it's the psychic unit. So if your opponent brings six Zoanthropes in one squad, you only get one point for killing it. Or two points in this case. Uh, Waver and Psychers are the same thing, but a Primaris Psyker, you'll actually get the full three points for. A Neurothrope, you'll get the full three points for. Hive Tyrant, you'll get the full three points for. Honestly, a poor the Witch and freaking um, the other one, the Monster Slayer one, is so good to take. Um, take and Hold Domination. Um, that sounds uh, a bit... Um, some people are into that. Add the following to the end of every primary objective in this mission pack. In the fifth battle round, the player who has the secondary, the second turn does not score any victory points at the end of their command phase, but instead, but instead at the end of their turn, they score five victory points for each of the above conditions they satisfy to a maximum of 15 points. Okay, that's actually, that's actually really cool. I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. Because it was always weird if you went first because you would score it at the end of your command phase where you didn't do anything and you were just sitting there like, awesome. Okay. So now it's at the end of your turn so you can actually move on to objectives. I change the second seconds of this paragraph to read unless specifi specifically stated. Other units and abilities have no effect on units whilst they embarked. Yep, we already got that. Um... Uh, we already read this one. Uh, rare rules, rare rules, rare rules. We already read all of these. Um, defense rules, yep, we read that. Shooting whilst embarked in transport, we read that. Uh, transport rules that count as remaining stationary. Uh, units cannot disembark from transport models after it has moved. Yep, this is the one that screws over white scar players. Okay. So Codex Love Buds, Nucleid Spores and Spore Mines Living Bombs, and the following ability. This unit cannot perform an action. Oh, I can't perform an action with my Spore Mine. <laughs> so, interesting enough, interesting enough, and let me show you this. So this is, this is so funny. Okay. Mucolid spore and spore mines. This is a meiotic spore. <laughs> can perform an action. <laughs> oh, GW, I love you. You swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. I could still take a 15 point spore mine to grab an objective in the back. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just, it's just really funny that they missed. Uh, but that's it for them. So they made it so spore mines can't grab it. Tau Empire, a lot of stuff has changed. Um, I'm hoping their drone stuff has changed, but I doubt it. Yeah, it looks like only two things changed. Um, having updated several weapon profiles, we have also... Uh, reviewed the relics and replaced the, one of the updated weapons. As a result, uh, we've decided to update. Okay. So they have a replacement weapon. All right. So this is about Shadow Sun, isn't it? Update to the armor rule once per battle at the end of, at the start of your turn. Uh, a single sept commander. Okay. So just one uh, can declare Kion and Monka. Okay. Montka. Is it Montka? 
or Mantka. I always heard it pronounced both ways. And then Koyan, or however you want to pronounce it. I always pronounce it Kayan, mostly because of the psyker. Um, boop -da -boop -da -boo, what else? Change the range characteristic to read 12 inches. So this was a flamer, so there we go. Um, so it looks like all flamers are being updated. All right, Spas Marines, we got a bunch of changes. Okay, change Guardian Spear to Vigil Spear. That's actually important because otherwise you couldn't update, upgrade it. Um, Combat Doctrine bonuses. Really, is every large vehicle going to go by today? This is what I live with. In each of the Space Marine Codex supplements, you will find a detachment ability that confers additional bonuses to units with the Combat Doctrine abilities. Uh, while a particular doctrine is active for your army, i.e. Scions of Gilliman in Codex Space Marines, um, uh, Savage Fury in Codex Space Wolves, uh, with rules that allow you to gain bonuses for a particular doctrine, even though it is not active for the rest of your, rest of your army. Um, the stratagem. Then whilst this rule applies to that unit, that unit will also gain the benefits for any such detachment abilities. Ooh. Okay, so it works exactly how I've been playing it. Okay, so nothing really changed there either. It's just, it's clarifying wording again. All right, combat resolve. Uh, change the second sentence in this stratagem to read. Select one chapter apothecary unit from your army. Oh yeah, it can't affect invader ATV squads. I was again right. This one I want to rub in everyone's face because I said that this change was on its way. No one believed me. Land speeders are better than the ATV. Now I'm right forever because the ATV can no longer be repaired and the land speeder can. Thus, the land speeder is better, has more better, has better weapons, has the ability to fly, moves further, and can be repaired by a tech marine on a bike. And yes, you can take a tech marine on a bike. It's a Legends unit. Legends is fully able to be used in matched play, just not in tournaments. And that depends on your tournament organizer. Just want to say, I was right. I called this the second I saw this. I was like, there is no way a chaplain is going to be able to revive an entire bike. Um, okay, just putting that out there. Boo, boo, boo. Interceptor squad power rating. I don't care about power rating. No one cares about power rating. Power rating is dumb and should be taken out of the game. Um, and then just some points adjustments. So eradicators went up. Um, Outriders went up. They didn't need it. Outriders are kind of bad right now. Uh, they're good in like, they're actually good strictly in uh, Death Watch. It's really funny. Units that I consider bad in Space Marines are really good in Death Watch, like Reavers, but you only put one guy in a squad. Outriders, you put five in a squad and they're really good at five, but at three, they're garbage. Um, Inceptor squads. I didn't think that these guys needed to go up there. I guess with the plasma guns, they're okay. They're not really that great, though. Okay. Excuse me. Next up, we got the Necrons. Synoptic Reanimator. Um, okay, let's call this thing what it's actually called. The Camel. The Synoptic Camel. Power rating changed and said sheet to four. I don't care about the power rating. Uh, the track stalker keyword add quantum shielding. Cool, they got quantum shielding. The Sustan Shard of the Nightbringer's power rating has changed to 19. So it looks like he's going up in points. Synoptic Reanimator cost from 110 to 80. Uh, yeah, the Nightbringer went up in points by 20 points. That's an oof. The Nightbringer was the Nightbringer is good. Don't get me wrong, he's almost an auto-include. I would say if he was at 330 he would be an auto include at 350 he's questionable he's good i'm gonna say he because the nightbringer in lore is referred to strictly as male um but the nightbringer at 350 i feel like there's better options in the necrons than the nightbringer himself now for him to go up to 370 it's mm, it, that's a tough call that's not a competitive model anymore 
in my opinion. See, 20 points is actually big in armies that take infantry. And I know that sounds weird, but it's so true. Because you can take a few extra warriors for that. And those few extra warriors might actually do more damage output than the Nightbringer. The Nightbringer might just get nuked turn one where the rest of your army can revive. I don't know. It, it's, it's, well, I shouldn't say I don't know because I actually do know. It just seems like it going up in points is actually a huge nerf to it. Uh, looks like we only got the um, player of the Twilight and the following uh, to the end of the Warlord trait. This limit is currently refunds one command point per battle round. Does not apply to any command points gained via the Warlord trait. Okay. So you can't just keep gaining off of um, stacking those two abilities. So again, Harlequin's got nerfed for no reason. Um, I honestly don't know why. Jean Silicolt. Okay, we got a few things that changed. Uh, Crusade changed, so I'm not going to care about that. I changed the last sentence in this stratagem to read. Uh, which stratagem? Stratagem, a perfect ambush. Okay. The unit can move can either make a normal move up to d6 inches as though were your movement phase, even if it has arrived by reinforcements. Does that mean I can run? Um, or it can shoot with all of its ranged weapons as if it were your shooting phase. Using a stratagem on your own turn does not prevent the unit from shooting in your shooting phase or making charge moves in your charge phase this turn. But now we know that if you do advance, it does actually count against you because your unit advanced that turn. Um, so they're just clarifying. That's not a... Yeah, that's just a clarification. Okay. And that's it. Couldn't bring back... Um, couldn't lower our points? Did you lower our points? No. No, you didn't. Lower our goddamn points. Chaos Daemons. Chaos Matt Daemons. Uh, looks like we only got one change, which is kind of really terrible. Um, but okay. Kind of wish uh, Keepers of Secrets would go up to Toughness 8. That would make them really good. Are mortal wounds considered to be an attack with a damage characteristic of 1 for purposes of Nurglings uh, ruled? No. Okay then. That's the only change. Okay. That's kind of bad. And I opened demons twice. So overall, this really clarified rules and the biggest nerf was to the ATV. And I know a lot of people are going to be complaining about the ATV being like, oh, I bought like six of them just for this reason. And I'm going to look at you and just say, if you know something is broken, if you know flat out that it is broken and there's no tournament scene, don't waste your money. It's really easy. The second I saw it, I was just like, I, okay, one, I didn't think it was a good idea. And I will point this out. I take um, assassination, okay? I'm your opponent. You have the ATVs, you have a character that needs to run out and, you know, fiddle with the bikes and bring them back to life. Cool, I'm going to jump on that character, that chief apothecarian that you spent a lot of points on, and I'm going to kill him. That's what I'm going to do. Or I'm going to snipe him. Because you pulled him out of cover to keep up with the ATVs, and he had to advance. So he's not shooting. He's not doing anything. And he has to run up, get within three inches of them, and revive a bike. Now, that is really cool. You get a bike back. Um, but I get to kill your character and gain more points. So thanks. I never thought it was good. And I knew its potential for being broken, but at the same time, I was just like, ugh, this is going to be good with Dark Angels who actually have a bike apothecary, where the rest of the Space Marines don't unless you go to Legends, so you can't really use it in tournaments. So you were just being a jerk at your local events. Just saying. If you had local events, which I really hope you didn't, because we need to stay safe, at least until the vaccine is out, get the damn shot. The Emperor protects. <sighs> so with that all said, I want to know what you guys thought of the biggest changes here. Personally, I think it's to the bikes and possibly to the Gene Stealer cult where they can pop up in their deployment zone nine inches away, regardless of the rules that my opponent has. I think that's really big. 
that's going to make my gene stealers playable. Um, playable, not good, but playable, unless you bring nine Ridge Runners. But with that being said, tell me your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, subscribe to this channel. If you're new here, just do it. You've already watched like two, three of my videos anyway. And even if you disagree with me, I'm kind of funny. <laughs> anyway, guys, check out the links in the description down below. There you can follow me on all social, social media, including Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I might actually make a, twic a TikTok. It's looking like so much fun. Uh, so I might do that. <laughs> And I want to thank all of my patrons, uh, patrons, patrons, patronians, those people, um, for helping support the channel, especially during these troubled times. Stay safe, everybody, especially if you're an American right now. Please stay safe. As always, Norn Queen Alexis. I love you guys. Bye.